He's the best we've got. That's what Bernstein said about Aaron Copeland. Composer Aaron Copeland was born on November 14th, 1900, in Brooklyn, New York. In an autobiographical story, Copeland described his birthplace like this. I was born on a street in Brooklyn that could only be described as drab. His father had an Eastern European Jewish background, and his surname was originally Kaplan, but it was anglicised to Copeland during his migration to America. Most of Aaron's earliest immersion in music was during Jewish weddings and ceremonies, and traditional Jewish songs gave him the earliest impression of music and harmony. He wanted to play the piano, so he learned from his older sister, Lorene. She also brought home some libretti, so that Aaron could study them. A true decision to pursue a musical career came to Copeland at the age of 15, after visiting a concert by Polish pianist and later Prime Minister, Ignacy Padawuski. Copeland started his education in harmony and composition under Ruben Goldmark, who was among the best music teachers in the USA. Studying with him gave Aaron a solid foundation in theory, but he wanted to be part of the community of young and more courageous composers. His hopes turned to France. It was the musical mecca of those times, so Copeland was dreaming to set off. In 1920, Aaron found out from a newspaper that the Fontainebleau School of Music made an open call for young American musicians to spend a summer near Paris. He rushed to apply and was first on the list. In France, Copeland found a musical community of young artists who encouraged each other to experiment with forms and genres. At this time, Copeland sold his first musical composition to Durand and Sons, the most respected music publisher in France. Inspired by his success in Europe, Copeland came back to the States in the mid-twenties and continued to work. He was trying to create a sound that would feel American in its scope. It was the jazz age in the States, so Copeland started to incorporate some jazzy and folk idioms to enrich classical pieces. As a result, his early works combined vernacular and serious music traditions. In 1925, Copeland debuted the Symphony for Organ and Orchestra with the New York Symphony Orchestra. The conductor, Walter Damroche, stopped during the performance and commented to the appalled audience, If a young man can write like that at age of 25, in five years he will be ready to commit murder. At this point, Copeland's career could have finished, but actually it was just a start. And... No, he didn't murder anyone. In 1925-26, to 26, Copeland won two $2,500 Gergenheim Fellowships, which supported him during these years. When the Depression came, Copeland travelled to Europe, Africa and Mexico, which gave him inspiration for some of his signature works, like El Saloon, Mexico and Prairie Journal. Later, in the late 1930s, Aaron developed an intention to write music for useful purposes and to reach a wider audience. Hence, he collaborated with movie companies and created soundtracks for films. Copeland became a renowned composer, writing the scores for Our Town, Of Mice and Men, and The North Star. All three projects brought him Academy Award nominations. His music for The Harris, 1949, won an Oscar. In 1945, he received the Pulitzer Prize for music for his ballet score, Appalachian Spring. Copeland was a versatile composer. One piece could be full of melodious tunes, the next one as abstract as modernist paintings. This approach disturbed people at first because they couldn't frame Copeland's style. In an interview with the New York Times, the artist explained... I like to feel free. I don't want to be tied down by anyone's system, not even my own. During the 1930s, the composer launched his Copeland Sessions concerts, during which he presented new works by young composers. He spent time teaching composition at Tanglewood Music Centre in Massachusetts, but he 
didn't like the term teaching because, in his eyes, he was only diagnosing. I didn't like people telling me what to do when I was younger, and I'm not going to start doing it myself. With his constant support of young talents and the rising popularity of his music, Copeland gained respect in the community of American classical musicians. They even nicknamed him the Dean of American Music. Copeland died in 1990. His ashes were scattered on the grounds of the Tanglewood Music Centre, where he worked for 25 years. <laughs> 